President Tinubu expresses concern over mass exodus of health workers. NUC resource verification team visit Kogi State University, Kaba. Ukrainian sniper claims new world record. And in sports, hold Pesero responsible if Nigeria fails to qualify for World Cup. Dawson. This is the MLC TV Global News, reaching you live from the city of Lokoja, the confluent state of Nigeria. I am Joshua Adenoy. Thanks for joining us. The president of Nigeria, Bola Ahmed Tinibu, has expressed concern over the increasing number of healthcare professionals leaving the country for better opportunities abroad. President Tinibu raised the alarm. President Tinibu raised the alarm during the annual conference of the Association of Medical Laboratory Scientists in Abuja, which focused on the importance of medical laboratories in achieving universal health coverage in Nigeria. Represented by his special advisor on public health matters, Salma Anas, the president said he is worried about the Japa syndrome, which he inherited from previous administration for obvious reasons. He said his administration is committed to enhancing the country's healthcare sector, stressing that part of his commitment is to reverse the ugly trend and ensure that the country sustain and retain her medical expert within Nigeria through several interventions and measures. Former Nigerian President Olusegun Obasanjo has insisted that Western liberal democracy has not worked for Africa. Obasanjo stated this while delivering his keynote address at a high-level consultation on rethinking Western liberal democracy for Africa in Abeokuta, Ogun State Capital. The former president, who is the convener of the gathering, described Western liberal democracy as a government of a few people over all the people or population, noting that the few people are representatives of only some of the people and not full representatives of all the people. He said liberal democracy does not take into account the continent's history culture and tradition, explaining that the Western style of democracy failed in Africa because it does not consider the views of the majority of the people. According to him, African countries have no business in operating a system of government in which they have no hand in its definition and design, stressing that the weakness and failure of liberal democracy as it is practiced stem from its history, content and context and its practice in the country. The Deputy Minority Leader of the 10th Senate, Dr. Larry Oyeumi, has called on Nigerians to desist from habits capable of causing pollution to their environment. Oyeumi made the call in Ikire, Oshun State, while addressing newsmen on climate change and environmental hazards. The Senator who is representing Oshun West Senatorial District at the Red Chamber frowned at the habit of dumping refuse and waste on waterways, saying that such uncivilized habit has caused many Nigerians to lose their properties while others become homeless. He also warned Nigerians not to embark on bush burning at the dry season, calling on them to seek alternative way of clearing their bushes to avoid environmental disaster. Oshun State Government has rolled out palliative buses to convey civil servants, students, and other residents of the state along selected routes and destinations in the state. The intervention, which is kickstarting in Oshobo with five buses, is part of the efforts to cushion the effect of the removal of subsidy from petroleum products by the federal government on civil servants, students, and the residents. The buses are to work Two shifts in a day, morning shift between 6.45 a.m. to 9 a.m., while the afternoon shift will start from 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. from Monday to Friday across the designated areas in Oshun State. Speaking of the official flag off of the use of the buses, Governor Ademola Adedeke assured the residents of the state that their welfare remained paramount to his administration. The governor, who was represented by the state deputy governor, Prince Kola Adeusi, said the present administration will continue to embark on programs and policies 
that will put smiles on the faces of the people of Oshun State. Nigeria's premier company, Shell, says it will continue to support education in Nigeria by building on its scholarship and allied programs which have helped thousands of Nigerians to acquire skills for leadership positions since 1950s. The assurance was given by the country chair, Shell Companies in Nigeria and Managing Director of the Shell Petroleum Development Company of Nigeria Limited, Osagi Okumbo, while being conferred with a honorary doctorate degree in business administration by the Enugu State University of Science and Technology, ESUT, at its convocation ceremony. He said Shell currently have over 3,500 university grants for Nigerian students, expressing delight at the honor done him through the award of a honorary doctorate degree. Representatives from the National University Commission, NUC, has visited Kogi State University, KSU Kaba, for a resource verification visit. A statement by the Public Relations Officer of the University, Tade Oshaloto, explained that the visit was in pursuit of the Chancellor's commitment to realizing the vision of Governor Yahya Bello's government, which aims to ensure the commencement of full academic activities in the 2023 2024 academic E. During the visit, the team inspected lecture theaters, classrooms, laboratories, studios, libraries, including the E library, workshop, and also assessed the institution's human resources. The vice chancellor of the university, Professor Kendi Timito Peniola, assured the team of the unwavering commitment of the executive governor of the state, Yahya Bello the university management and the university's supporters to ensure that the institution will not only strive to surpass its competitors but also become the epitome of excellence in the state. We go on a break. We'll be back shortly. Malachi TV Online is here. For your timely and reliable news that reaches you fast with the breaking news, choose MLC TV. Get human interest stories right here on MLC TV. With entertainment, sports, business, culture, tourism, and fashion news stories all featured on MLC TV. Not forgetting political and current affairs news, state and federal government and people's matters will be discussed regularly on MLC TV. MLC TV, your one-stop online destination for unbiased, accurate news, entrepreneur ideas, and youth matters to the rest of the world. MLC TV, reaching everywhere, informing everyone. Welcome back. On politics, the People's Democratic Party, PDP, in Benue State, has vowed to use all legal options to recover the governorship of the state which it believes rightly belongs to the party. The appeal court sitting in Abuja had earlier dismissed the appeal by the governorship candidate of the PDP, Engineer Titus Uba, and upheld the ruling of the tribunal that affirmed the election of Governor Yansit Alia of the All Progressives Congress, APC, the winner of the March 18, 2023 election in the state. The spokesman of PDP in the state, Bengba Iotium, in a statement claimed that the last election was won by the candidate of the PDP, Engineer Uba, and he would instruct his legal team to challenge the appeal court's ruling at the Supreme Court. On crime, the police in Edo State have arrested a 35-year-old suspected kidnapper, James Imelai while he was trying to buy food for his gang members. The command spokesperson, Chidi Wabuzo, said the suspect was arrested through credible intelligence by soldiers and vigilante when he came out to buy food for the victim and his accomplice. Imelai was arrested over the alleged kidnapping of one Lilian Ofoshare at Ikara Primary School, Olobo community near Bini, Confessing to the crime, the suspected kidnapper said he joined his friends for the operation because he needed money 
to repair his faulty motor saw. He explained that they met Lillian teaching in her school, waited till she was through and we laid her on her way home with a double barrel and two cut to size guns. He added that they made a demand of 5 million naira from her parents as ransom for her release. On the foreign scene, a Ukrainian sniper is now the world record holder after picking off a Russian soldier from 2.36 miles away with a custom rifle called Lord of the Horizon. According to report, the unnamed soldier who served in Ukraine's security service managed to beat the previous record of 2.2 miles made by a Canadian special operation sniper in Iraq in 2017. In sports, former Nigerian international Joseph Dosun has told Nigerians to hold Super Eagles coach Yos Fosero responsible if Nigeria fails to qualify for the 2026 FIFA World Cup. Dosun made the call while reacting to Nigeria's 1-1 draw against Zimbabwe in a World Cup qualifier at the Huye Stadium, Botare. Goals from Walter Musona and Kedechi Ihenacho ensured both Nigeria and Zimbabwe shared a point each. Nigeria now has two points from two games after the Zimbabwe encounter. He said the recent performance of the team was becoming worrisome, noting that the team's coach must rise up to the occasion and change the narratives. Asna's legend Saul Campbell has advised the Gunners to make a move for Victor Osimen. Osimen is yet to extend his contract with the Syria A champions and will have a year remaining on his deal by next summer. There are reports that the striker could leave the Patenope in the summer. Campbell said Osimhen will make huge difference in the club, calling on the management to do their best to sign him. Joy Dada has the latest entertainment news. Welcome to the world of entertainment. I am Joy Dada. In Africa, the Johnson's actor Sam Ajibola and his wife Sandra Ajibola has seen a blogger over his post where he claimed the father of their newborn son is Olushegu Obasanjo. The actor is quite popular for his role in the Johnson's where he acted as Pave. After he publicly announced his decision to quit, many blame his wife for being the brains behind that decision. The actor posted on his Instagram addressing the allegations of Obasanjo being the father of his son. According to him, he has seen the rumor a long time, but he had been analyzing it to come up with the best possible solution. He lamented on the fact that the harassment began after he announced his wife, and many internet users has cooked up stories to defend her character. Using this blogger as a scapegoat, Sam Ajibola and his wife have sealed him to the worth of 10 million naira. And the foreign scene, American rapper P. Daddy has settled with his ex-girlfriend Cassie on the rape and assault charges levied against him. The two resolved their case amicably less than 24 hours after the $30 million bombshell suit was filed. Casey, whose full name is Cassandra Ventura, disclosed this in a statement provided to the New York Times. Didi, whose real name is Sin Combs, also provided a statement to the news outlet announcing that they decided to settle their case out of court. In her very public case file, Casey alleged that her relationship with the rapper was riddled with physical, sexual, and emotional abuse. Their on and off relationship lasted for a decade, and she revealed that within those years, she was forced to participate in sexual encounters with male prostitutes, as Didi watched, masturbated, and record videos. Now, despite the fact that Didi attorney denied all the claims that she made, calling her attempts a cash grab, the rapper has chosen to pay her the $30 million she demanded for damages. 
Thanks for joining me. I am Joy Dada reporting for MLC TV. Thank you, Joy. And that is the size of our package for today. Do support us by subscribing to our YouTube channel, Malakite TV. Like and follow our Facebook page, MLC TV, MLC TV 2, MLC TV Yoruba, and MLC TV Ebirababe. Instagram, MLC TV 2021. X handle, Malakite TV. And TikTok, Malakite underscore TV. For your event coverage, appearance on any of our programs, contributions, comments, advert placement, or sponsorship, please call or send SMS to any of our numbers displayed on your screen. Join Malakai TV online on weekends to watch our various programs, Saturday 7 p.m. Political Arena, Sunday 6 p.m. Women's World, and Monday 9 a.m. The Opinion. It's Malakai TV, reaching everywhere, informing everyone. Please, continue to be a brother's keeper to build a happier and better society together. I am Joshua Adenoy. Thanks for watching.